This is part two of our two-part series covering the Leupold Mark 5 HD 7-35 by 56. This time, we're nerding out on data. Gavin, you here. I'm back with Travis Fox. Travis, thank you for joining us. Hi, Gavin. Thanks for having me here. This is part two. In our last story, we talked about Leupold Mark 5 HD. We got it out of the box. We talked about what's included. We gave an overview of the specs. And I covered a process that I wanted to try after Gordy Gritter's rifle building school, and that is bedding the scope tube into the rings. Now, one guy on the video commented, why are you telling me that I need to bed the rings you know, to my scope? And I said, I'm not telling you anything. I saw a technique and I wanted to try it. Because we can? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, the way I view these things, you want to leave as little as possible to chance. And I'll tell you one thing, this scope, and we didn't really mention that in the first story, I have shot the most consistent group I've ever shot with this scope. And that was with the 6 Dasher rifle yeah. that I built. Five shots went to, into 0 .090 inches. So that tells me this scope handles recoil well. Yes, 6 Dasher is not a real heavy recoiling rifle, but in terms of repeatability, that is something that you absolutely need to be able to count on. Well, yeah. In regards to the, to the bedding the rings, we're doing a lot of things here mm -hmm. at Ultimate Reloader to test things, to prove, disprove, to find out what works, what doesn't work. And we like to do things to show you people how to do them, just because yeah. there's a lot of different ways to go about this. And so we can test things and we can show you guys. Yeah. We're providing data, and when you provide data to people, you want to kind of minimize any variables, of which there are many in the precision rifle world. So I think that really sets the stage for this story. This, the optic is something that people don't obsess about to the same level as they tend to on the rifle itself. Correct. Uh, have I bedded the action you know, to the stock? Uh, what kind of barrel am I running? What kind of reamer geometry? All this stuff. And I've realized more and more how critical the optic is to getting on target. Yep. What is the rule? You spend X amount of dollars on the rifle, you spend at least that much on your scope or somewhere mm -hmm. in that range. Well, when you're spending that much money, we're going to test these scopes for you guys, find out how they're tracking, yep. find out what the optical quality is, and just find out how they're working for you in general. So that is so true. And before we get into this nerd out lab data, let's talk about what we learned during the process of filming this story, a lot. which was a lot. The first thing we realized was the distance to the test target, our test chart, is a critical factor. And we tried, I think, four or five different laser range finders, and guess how many distances we got? Four, four or five, or five. <laughs> different distances that varied by as much as about two and a half yards yep. total. And that is almost 3%, and that's not something that we can nope. have in our for, testing. For what we're doing on our testing, we want to be exact. We want to be perfectly on the distance that we need to be. Yep. So we We've got, got the Leica, Leica, the Leica Disto D2. This goes to about 333 feet, is that yep. what they said? So yep. just over 100 yards, and it's accurate to... Yep. 16th of an inch? 16th of an inch. <laughs> We can live with that amount of error. And what we found was we were darn close. I think we were about 2.4 feet yep. off somewhere in that, in that range. So what you'll see when we get into things like the tracking test and the reticle test is for some we have two different images. One where we aligned everything perfectly yeah. and the other where we went back and we retested some of the reticle graduation scale and tracking data with that two and a half yard adjustment. Yeah, and our our uh, test target leveling wasn't perfect on that. Yes. We'll have to admit that. Um, that was on the second test. So yeah. we will we'll, we'll we'll talk that. about we'll where those that. specific yeah. cases are. Right. So without further ado, let's get into the lab data. So tracking is typically the first test that we look at, but this is actually what we performed last this time because we corrected our distance. We wanted to make sure that when we're dialing up three, that chart that we have is exactly, exactly 100 yeah. yards from the target. It needs to be spot on. We want to find mm -hmm. out that this thing is doing exactly what it should. So we start here in this baseline target. You'll see the target is moved forward off of our yep. 100 yard About 2.4 feet or so. So for each of these tests, when we dial left on our windage turret cap, we're going to see the reticle go right, right? Because that's going to cause you to shift over to the left. 
So we're going three mils in each direction here to what should be the edge of the chart. You can see here it's pretty close, but when we dialed right, we saw a little bit more error, which means we probably weren't perfectly centered on the target. So we'll average those two errors. Dialing up pushes the reticle down. You can see here it's almost exactly aligned. Very hard to tell in here. Yeah. Good results here with this uh, vertical. And the same with dialing down. So along elevation, things look extremely, extremely good. Yep. Air, starting with windage. We had about a tenth on the one side and we about had about three hundredths on the other side. So when you average that out, it works out to about 0 0.022 mils per mil error, which is about 2.2%. Now this is a value that you can type into your ballistics app, like a stray lock or a shooter app yep. to correct for that. And when we look at the elevation tracking error, we had about one one hundredth or less, I would yeah. say. Almost nothing. At the top and at the bottom. And that works out to about three thousandths of a mil per mil error or 0.3%. I would say it's actually less than that. Yeah. We had probably. to kind of guess based on 4K Ultra HD image shot via video through the tube. It's hard to even see any error. Do we have much mirage? No, there, wasn't, there wasn't much that day, so. Yeah. That is another important note, however. Yeah. The mirage will cause things to dance around, as you know. Kind of your point of aim shifts yeah. kind of all over it, the place. And it's, it is impressive how much it can move, even when we're testing at 50 yards, 100 yards. Yep. There is significant movement of the reticle out there. So when you're trying to get precise like this, we, this is part of our learning process. Yeah, we're learning how to do this, and we're learning when and where we need to do things. We might do this testing at night with specific illumination yeah. for that purpose because we're very hardcore about wanting to get real data and real results. Yeah. And this, this data is really important to precision shooters. Yeah, it's very, <laughs> we want to be able to give you guys the real deal on this. We want to be able to tell you what these scopes are exactly doing. Mm -hmm. So you will have confidence in your purchase or you can have confidence in your correction that you put in your ballistic app. That's true. So next we're going to talk about reticle alignment and reticle hash mark accuracy. On the two images here of the reticle alignment and hash marks, you'll notice the darker target is at the 100 yard, our supposed 100 yard target backer, different lighting conditions that day and the precise 100 yard target is more in the sun. You get a different image here, it's gonna get different quality just due to the lighting parameters that we had going on. But what you will notice is at the precise 100 yard test, how the reticle is lined up and the hash marks were lined up with the correct marks. Yeah. Now when you go to the darker image, the precise target scope camera level, we took the time that day, that target was perfectly leveled to the scope testing rig, to the target, perfect. And you'll notice on here how the reticle is perfectly flat and straight mm -hmm. all the way across and perfectly vertical. So this reticle is, is totally lined up exactly how it should be. We go to the other target and we, didn't do, we didn't do such a great job lining that up. It's very, very close. Yeah, very, very but close. you'll notice that the reticle is shifted in the correct size to the target. Yeah. Very little error on that right. chart compared to the one where we were a little bit further away. And now this is a good demonstration on these two images here of different lighting conditions for these scopes and how mm -hmm. they are going to provide that image to your eye and, and what it's going to do. Yep. So we also did a couple additional tests, magnification and parallax. Let's talk about those yep. next. The magnification testing is not that of a super critical parameter, but it is definitely an indicator of A, does the scope say to do what it says it can do? Yep. Is it really seven to 35? Is it five times larger, whatever you're looking at, at 35 compared to seven? And then how well do the magnification marks on, on that adjustment dial line up to reality. So what I did here was we took video through the scope at all of the different indicated magnification settings. We took screen grabs of those and then I basically, as magnification goes down, I scale the images up. So for instance, if the 35 power image was at 100%, the 7X image was scaled up five times that big and then they were all lined up next to each other, basically cutting out just the main portion of the test chart. 
what we should see here is that all of these squares are the same size. And I will say they are the same size. This is one of the, well, we've tested a few scopes. This is probably the best result we've had so far. Definitely. If you yeah. look at our Midas TAC, for instance, the, the 5 to 25, we did it. It did really well, but it wasn't quite as consistent as this. Right. 7 power is really 7 power, and 35 power is really 35 power. So that's uh, nice, and if you're using your magnification to judge the size of objects, that's just an, an added bonus for that. One of the things I want to mention on that is if you look at that scale, you'll notice how your light gathering capabilities mm -hmm. go down as you increase your magnification. Keep that in mind yep. under low light conditions. Keep that in mind when you're buying a scope and what you're going to use that scope for. Now, the camera, when we're shooting in manual mode, like we're shooting in, same aperture, same shutter speed, same ISL, will show that very literally. Yep. But the human eye is more complex. Yeah. It can adjust. So that's why using a camera can actually be a benefit here as we can see yep. the actual real scaled values. Okay, the parallax test, this is where our optics testing rig comes in super handy. Now, we can't show you the optics test rig yet because this is technology that we're looking at patenting and it's proprietary. But what we can tell you is that we can move the camera one thousandth of an inch X, Y, and Z. We can move it any direction that we want very precisely. And what we did was we took a look at this scope and we shifted the camera left and right, as if you're behind the rifle scope and you know you're moving your head to the left and right. And we determined that at about 40 thousandths of an inch off center, we would get a little bit of haloing on each side. It's kind of like a dark shadow Start on either side. Start to lose your image, yep. Yeah, we wanted to still be able to see through the scope so that we could capture the test images. So we have here in the center where we started with, where everything was in perfect alignment. And believe it or not, we can tell just by looking at the image through the camera when we're about two thousandths yep. uh, within the center. It's very, very precise. So we moved it to the left, 40 thousandths of an inch. We moved it to the right, 40 thousandths of an inch. And this is with the parallax set to 100 on the scope. And so we didn't go through and do a manual test. This is kind of a test to see how accurate that 100 mark is. And as you can see here, there is very, very little shift. In fact, right 40 shifted just a little bit more probably than the left 40. Uh, so a very good result, and if you dial further, you're going to be able to dial that completely out, which you should always do before you do precision shooting. One more thing we wanted to show you before we wrap up this video is our image distortion test. The camera that we're using has in-camera lens distortion correction. We've tested that, and what we're looking at here is we want to look through the scope, and we want to see this test grid as a perfect square not with any kind of a pin cushion effect or kind of a GoPro look where you've got the wide angle distortion yeah. on that. And as you can see here, we have a perfect box drawn that's perfectly level. Everything is perfectly level and we see perfectly parallel lines all the way around. And this is not even something you might notice, but it is an important reflection of the, the quality, quality of the optics. Op yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a great image. You, you can really pick up a lot on these. Mm -hmm. Following this image distortion, following the reticle alignment, this is a great scope. Uh, it was very impressive to shoot with. Yep. One more thing to note is don't judge these images that we've been showing for the mechanical testing as optical quality testing because yeah. one thing we found out is we laminated the chart so it wouldn't get dirty, right? But that, that laminated layer on the chart provides sort of a glare and it makes things look not as contrasty and not quite as, as sharp. So we're just using those for mechanical testing, yep. and we are working really hard on the optics quality testing, which is pretty exciting as well. We're hoping to give you viewers a lot of information here to be able to provide you with good data, good details, and we're learning a ton at the same time too. Mm -hmm. We're just constantly updating our testing parameters. Yeah, it's, it's really frustrating and really exciting all at the <laughs> same time, right? Is. I think we had this scope on the rig three or four times three or four yeah. different days looking at different yeah. things. Uh, what we can tell you, this scope is made in the USA. This is an extremely high quality scope. And I think I looked on Amazon. If you click down there in the video description, I'll have a link over to it. About $2,699. For this model. And that, I mean, I, I think that's batting above its weight range, you know, if, yeah. you, if you ask me. It's a good scope. There are several other models of this scope to choose from. Mm -hmm. You can get an MOA. You get all kinds of different reticles. Illuminated reticle. You can get illuminated yeah. reticle. You can get a bunch of different reticles on it. Uh, what did I tell you? 
over 30 different yeah. variations on this scope alone, which yep. that's quite a few choices. Yeah, the other thing I think that stands out on this scope, the 35 millimeter tube, it, it helps to give it that elevation and windage uh, correction range. Good and light gathering. Good, good light gathering, very consistent on that. And then also the nature of the zero stop. It's very, very fast to set. And you've got a revolution counter built in based on whether the, yeah. the button is protruded, it's flat, very, or retracted. Yeah, it's very tactile. You, you don't even have to look at it. You can feel yep. this button here on the top. Yep. And it will tell you where you are in your rotation. One rotation, two rotations, or if you're getting back to your zero. Yeah, and then the larger diameter on this also gives you more of a mechanical advantage, which also, and a more tactile feel per click, right? It's a little bit yep. more distance yep. out at the circumference. The zoom ring is very smooth. It's, it's, it's not stiff, it's not loose. Uh, it's just the parallax is, is very smooth. Yep. Usable uh, lever, throw lever yeah. on the magnification, which I always like to have on every scope, even for hunting, personally. So, the only drawback that we have with this scope is that I have to fight Gavin for it. Yeah, that's right. But what we want to know is, are you running a loophole Mark V scope? Are you running a different set of options or parameters? What are you running it on? Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. We've got a lot more testing and a lot of more infrastructure development to do, so we're going to run along. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not going to want to miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.